Have you heard that the Jeep Wrangler is unreliable? Well then, this is the video for you. I'm gonna break it down and we're gonna start right now. Hey, my name is Dewey Jones. I am a Colorado Jeeper. I'm also a new YouTuber. What I do is I film trail guides with stock vehicles so you can actually see what the trail is like. Yeah. Okay, I know that's not why you're here. You're here about Jeep reliability. Let's discuss that. All right, so why am I talking to you about Jeep Wrangler reliability? Okay, I have been in a Jeep Wrangler for 20 years. I've had five of them, including two that went long-term with me. Um, I absolutely love these vehicles, but one of the biggest complaints I hear from anyone is that they are unreliable and you can't count on them. Um, so I'm going to give you my experience. Now, this is just one person's experience, but I feel having multiple different model years through the years, including having both long-term experience with a TJ Wrangler as well as a JK Wrangler. Um, I feel that I can be fair on this and I can give you some good info. So let's start with this 2012 Wrangler, which is rated as the most unreliable Jeep Wrangler made. All right, so according to carcomplaints.com or something like that, the 2012 Wrangler, this Wrangler, was rated as the most unreliable Jeep Wrangler ever made. Now, why did they say that? Well, this Jeep Wrangler is known to have some electrical issues, and uh, the early 2012 motors um, had some quality control issues. Um, have I had a lot of issues with this Jeep? Well... Let me discuss them. All right, so this one was built September 1st, 2011. I ordered it, um, and I have put every single mile on this thing, except for maybe one or two um, transport miles. After that, I uh, started wheeling it. I went wheeling right away on that new oil. So as I just said, this Jeep has been wheeled hard pretty much from the beginning and the first issue I had with this Jeep was my rear locker wasn't fully working it, it still would do the job it was still driving but it wasn't engaging for me so I took it to the Jeep dealer Jeep dealer looked at it and they completely replaced it under warranty knowing that it was most likely whatever the issue was was most likely due to me off-roading it all right so the next issue I encountered was quite a while later. I mean, this thing was rock solid despite the abuse that I gave it. Um, but uh, my rear driver's brake line broke. Um, Jeep was still drivable, but my brakes started becoming mushy, not as good. Cheap issue, no issues since. All right, so my next issue was a check engine light that indicated my O2 sensor went bad. Um, not a big deal. I was able to drive on it for a long time, basically had maybe less fuel mileage, but didn't really do any damage. And, but I did have a professional fix that because there is a water membrane and I just wanted to make sure that it was done right so that I can keep going through water um, whenever the, the time arises. So that was the next issue. All right, so the next thing that happened to this Jeep was there was a recall. There was a recall on the airbags. Not a big deal. Took it in, got it done, airbags were fixed. All right, so if you watched my Moab videos, you're gonna know what this next one is because you could hear it when I was doing. Um, but yeah, it was my clutch. My clutch went bad about 120,000 miles. Um, yeah, and I mean, I've been driving a stick my whole life. All 20 years in Wranglers, every Wrangler has been a stick. Um, this is the first one that went bad is a lot of money but this jeep's been paid off this jeep has been solid for me and um feels feels like i have a brand new jeep again um i love it so all right so let's discuss the needs of this jeep but not quite done yet this jeep needs new ball joints and new shocks um not a big deal i'm surprised honestly that the ball joints have lasted this long and with as much wheeling as this jeep has done shocks are no surprise to me um, is it still drivable? Absolutely. Let's discuss that thumbnail. I promise that wasn't clickbait. So, um, in December of 2019, 
I hit a 750 pound bull elk and that bull elk definitely did some damage. It got my fender, uh, my passenger fender, my grill, um, my headlight, my front plastic bumper. And you know, the Jeep was fine though. It was driving fine. No other issues with it. It just had the cosmetic stuff. Oh, got the radiator too. Um, the Jeep handled that elk really well. Um, took a month to get a collision shop appointment, but got it, got the appointment. They did some really good cosmetic work. However, their internal work was not the best. I had a grounding issue. Didn't really know it was a, a grounding issue, but basically this Jeep would not start at times. Um, I'd have to do things like open my door and close it or take a wrench to my battery terminal. Basically knowing that it was a grounding issue, but it was just frustrating. I was frustrated. Um, They got it sorted out, they fixed everything, and this Jeep has been perfect ever since then. Okay, so let's discuss some of my other Jeeps. I had a 2000 TJ that I had for 11, 12 years. That thing was amazing. It, it was bulletproof. Um, it was a great Jeep. The only reason I upgraded to a JK was unfortunately the JKs are a little bit better off road. And um, since it was my daily driver, um, has a little bit better creature comforts. I know. Um, what kind of Jeeper am I that I've given up my, you know, zip up windows and all that good stuff that I used to love for, you know, automatic windows, power locks, that kind of stuff. I don't know. But that Jeep was fantastic. That 4.0 inline six, incredible. Uh, all right, I think I've talked way too much. Um, that's not how my trail guides normally function. Although I have heard you guys, I will try and narrate them instead of doing all the text. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching this Jeep reliability long-term review. Um, if my experience with Jeep has been amazing. I um, I love them. They're great vehicles. They're durable. I mean, the stuff I do with it, the, the amount of beating up I do to this Jeep and the fact that it just, it went against a 750 pound elk and really was, is fine. I was driving around in it, probably could have wheeled it. So that's my thoughts on Jeep. All right, I knew I had this problem before coming out to Moab, but uh, ever since I've got my Jeep back from the collision shop and uh, a safety bag recall, um, I sometimes have an intermittent problem where I just don't start. Um, usually all I have to do is open the door, close it, and it'll start on the second try. Um, I have a new battery, so I know the battery's not an issue. I know it's nothing um, other than that. But uh, it wouldn't start now for about four times. So this is my last little trick. I take a little, little you know, socket wrench and uh, just tighten those battery terminals. So I'm pretty sure it's the terminals or something, but I definitely want my mechanic taking a look at this thing um, because it's, it's getting to be annoying.